thank all of you that are here this morning and all of you that's going to be watching us by way of Facebook Live. I think they've limited our audience some, but amen, we're going to continue to preach and believe God to do some great and mighty things Glory. for His kingdom. Amen. 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 I wanted to preach this morning about the gift of God. The gift of God. The gift of God. You know, a gift is something, amen, that's given without amen. compensation, natural abilities, or qualities. The act of giving, amen, like giving someone a present, is requiring nothing back, but it's requiring you to do what? To receive it. Amen? Amen. And everything we learn about in the Word of God, as you'll see this morning, is that God gives gifts. Amen. And God Amen. blesses His creation. And God wants to give you the gift of salvation, along with many other gifts. But that gift is the greatest gift. And how many of those gifts always cost someone something? Yeah. Amen. We say salvation is free. Well, it, it may be free to me and it may be free to you, but God gave His only begotten Son yes, he did. that whosoever would believe in Him should not perish but have amen. everlasting life. Amen. So it's free to us. Amen. And we praise God for that. But God had to give His Son and His Son had to die a horrendous death to bring salvation to us. I'm going to say amen. amen this morning. Amen. I want you to turn with me this morning to uh, James 1 verse 17. We're going to go through quite a few scriptures this morning, but I want to begin with this. And it says, Every good gift and perfect gift is from above, and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variance, neither shadow of turning. Amen. Also, you'll find in the Word of God, in Romans eleven twenty nine, for the gifts and the callings, amen, of God are without repentance. God never changes His mind. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. He calls you. He gifts you. All these gifts are in your life, amen. And He's called you and He's given you the ability to do what He's called you to do. But it's up to you to use what God has given you. Amen. You know, often we come to church and we've got this ideal that, well, the pastor needs to get out there and, and win souls for the Lord. Yes, he does, but so does the church. Yeah. I assure you that the, the pastor is the leadership of the congregation. Yes. But the sheep are the ones who should be bearing sheep. Amen. So you get out there in the world and use what God's called you to do. You may be called to sing and never sung a song. You may be called to teach and never taught a lesson. You may be called to preach and never preached a sermon. But guess what? On the day that you stand before God, you're going to stand there give an account for what God called you to do. Yes. Amen. Amen. See, I remember God calling me probably at the age of four years old, and I ran from God most of my life. Well, not most of my life now, because I've not got so old, amen. Most of my life is gone. But uh, I came to the Lord about age 17, backslid, went in the military, came out of the military, amen. And I was backslid, messed up, but God kept His hand upon me. Amen. And called me, and that call, amen, never left me. It was with me through the war. It was with me on the lonely nights. It was with me when we were being bombed. It was with me all the time. I carried a Bible. Amen. I slept uh, with that Bible on my chest because I knew uh, there was a God in heaven uh, even though I was running from Him. Uh, but like the prodigal, amen, one day uh, out of the pig pen, I came to myself uh, and said, I got to get back home uh, to the Father's house. Uh, because in the Father's house, uh, the servants are even living better than I'm living. Uh, can someone praise the Lord? Amen. Hallelujah. John chapter 4, verses 10 says this. He's talking to a Samaritan woman at the well. And Jesus says, Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, yeah. and who it is that saith to thee, Give me a drink. Thou wouldst have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. Amen. 
He said, she said he told me everything. I mean, he read me like a book. He knew my life inside and out. Do you realize you, there's nothing you can hide from God? Amen. Amen. There's no place you can hide from God. Amen. And whatever God's called you to do, do you realize this morning those gifts and those callings uh, are without repentance Amen. and God is going to require something uh, of you when you stand before Him? Uh, oh, glory to God. You ain't hearing me this morning. Amen. We're living in a day and an age when things have changed so drastically. Yeah. But we still got to go. Mm -hmm. We still got to pray. Amen. We still got to find souls that are lost. Can someone say amen? amen? She met Jesus. She believed Him. She left her old life for a new life in Christ. Oh, it was too much to keep to herself. Amen. It was a well of water springing up into everlasting life. My Lord, Brother Dave, I remember the first time I got saved, amen. I couldn't get up fast enough to tell everybody, man, I felt something I ain't never felt in my entire life. I felt the love of God, the love of Christ flow into my heart, an overwhelming, uh, amen, portion. Can someone praise the Lord? Uh, do you remember that day? Uh, amen. The Bible says you need to return to that first love, uh, that first love, that first touch that God uh, placed upon your life, that first, uh, amen, experience you had with the Lord Jesus Christ. Because if you don't watch out through life, amen, uh, the well gets stopped up uh, and it stops flowing. Amen. And the joy, amen, is pressed down. But I want to tell you this morning, God still is looking for those who will say, Lord, fill me up. Here's my cup. I want to tell you, God wants to do something supernatural in your life today. Yeah, Lord. Some of you might say, well, I'm just a little old me that God can't use. Seriously? If God can use a stick, stone, an old dry bone, and a rooster and a mule, He can use you. Amen. 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 Research it. It's all in there. And God didn't ask you to give Him something you ain't got. What did He say to Moses? What do you have in your hand? Moses said, I don't have nothing but a shepherd's rod. He said, use that. Yeah. David, what do you got in your hand? I don't have nothing but a slingshot. Use that. Oh, hallelujah. God will give you what you need before you even need it. Come on. Hallelujah. He doesn't call you because you're specially smart. Amen. you got an IQ that's way up there. He calls you because He's going to equip you. Yeah. He calls you because He's going to give you wisdom and knowledge and understanding that's not from beneath but from above. What's the Word of God said? If anyone lacks wisdom, if anyone lacks knowledge, let them ask Him. Because God will give it to them. Amen? Uh, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 and 9 says, For by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourself, it is the gift of God, not by works, lest any man should boast. Salvation is a free gift of God yeah. through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. If we could work for it or buy it, we would not, amen, uh, stop working and stop trying to acquire enough money to get what we need to buy that salvation. Yeah. I mean, know that. Hallelujah. But it's difficult when we say it's free. Free? What do you mean free? Yeah, it's real difficult when it's free. Folks don't understand things that are free. They're leery of things that are free. But if we can work for it, we work our fingers to the bones and end up with only bony fingers. Because this salvation doesn't cost you, it costs God. Yeah. Your obligation Amen. is to believe God. Amen? Amen? We need to realize that God is looking for those that He can trust and those that He can use. For the glory of God. Uh, you know, some of you this morning, you're always looking to yourself. You need to look to God. Yeah. See, the Bible says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your path. Well, I think I know better than God. No, you don't. Every step you take should be a step of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. You should not allow anything to detour you from what God has called you to do. 
Can someone say amen? amen? In Isaiah chapter 14 verses 12 through 15 it says, and listen, this is the devil. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, there's only two religions, and some of you are going to automatically tell me, no, there's thousands and thousands. Pastor, you're wrong about that. Thousands of religions. No, there's only two. There's either God or yourself. One or two of them are on the throne in your heart. And I'm praying this God. Can someone say amen? amen? Listen to what the devil says. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. Amen. First he says, I will ascend into heaven. Then when I'm in heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will set also upon the mount of the congregation and the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High God. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. Five times he says, I will. Uh -huh. well, I want to tell you, the Apostle Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, but Christ lives within me in the life which I now live. I live by the faith of the Son of God who gave himself for me. Can someone say amen? amen. That's what we need to do. Yes. We need to stop looking at everything and everybody and just begin to serve God Almighty. Amen? Amen. Amen. We're living in a trying, difficult time when people, amen, are not realizing that you need to be ready. Jesus didn't tell you that you have an opportunity to get ready. He said, be you ready for an hour. You think not, your Lord doth come. He said, watch and pray so it doesn't take you as a thief in the night. Amen. Amen. Jesus is coming. Right. Can someone praise Him this morning? Yes. It's a free gift. But you got to receive it. Acts 2, 38 and 39 says, Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you. How many of you? Every one of you. In the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. The gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Acts 2, 39 says, For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call the gifts and callings of God are without repentance, but many are called, but few are chosen, amen, because you have to receive what God has given into your hand and into your life, amen, before you're ever going to be beneficial to the kingdom of God. <laughs> gifts. God gives them, and we ought to be using them. Yes. The church used to use those gifts, amen, and, and be able to be used by the Holy Ghost in those gifts because it was for the edifying of the church, and we'll get to that. In 1 Corinthians 12, 4 and 11, it says, Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operation. But it's the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit who? With all. It's not something where you get up, uh, amen, and show off and think that God uh, is elevating you and God is doing something in you and everybody ought to admire you. No, it's something that should profit uh, everyone around you. Uh, it's something that should profit the church, uh, the body of Jesus Christ. Oh, you ain't hearing me this morning. Uh, amen. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. You ever had that? I, I can give somebody a word of wisdom right now. But I hold back. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. Take the wheel. To another, the word of knowledge. Because I already have the knowledge about it. Help me, Jesus. By the same Spirit. To another, faith. 
I've got enough faith to do it, but I'm going to hold back. <laughs> By the same Spirit to another gifts of healing, because they need a healing, amen. Because they need the power of God back in their lives, because they need to realize that without God, you are nothing and you cannot do nothing without Jesus Christ, which strengthens you from within. Can somebody praise the Lord? My, my, my. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. Oh, boy, we ought to have that. <laughs> Amen. How the devil talks to God's people today. Right. And how they've lost, amen, the senses that they should have been discerning. Yeah. Amen. Amen discerning good from evil, knowing who that is that's talking to you. Amen? Yeah. If somebody says something, or a spirit tells you something, and it doesn't line up with the Word of God, what is that? If a person comes to you and tells you something, uh, amen, and they're trying to get you uh, to come out of the Word of God, what is that? Uh, Jesus said, My sheep know my voice, uh, and no other voice shall they follow. Uh, folks, let me assure you, the devil's always uh, going to try to lure you uh, into darkness so he can trap you, uh, amen, in a place uh, where you're lost and undone, uh, and God wants to touch you, uh, but it's always, amen, Amen. You have to take a step huh, before God is going to take a step. Amen. Amen. The devil always try to remove you from where God places you. Amen. Amen. Did you ever think those times you stayed home from church and you missed the message? It might have been that message that would have brought deliverance to you or someone in your family. Yeah. Did you ever think that that service you missed uh, when you woke up uh, and your body was racked with pain, uh, that that might have been the day uh, that God had chose uh, to heal you and deliver you. Can someone praise the Lord? Yeah. See, I want to tell you something. The postal worker, amen, uh, if he comes uh, at the mailbox and it's loaded down with mails, he thinks that you uh, no longer live at that residence uh, and he takes the things back. Uh, let me assure you, God knows where you live. Uh, but if you keep, uh, amen, uh, refusing what God uh, is trying to give you, God is not going to pressure you. Uh, God's going to leave you to your only device uh, or your own device. Uh, and the Bible says there is a way that seemeth right to man, uh, but the end thereof is the way of destruction. Uh, I don't want to be destroyed. I don't want to lose my life. I don't want to lose my soul. I want to make heaven my home. Can someone praise the Lord? To another, diverse kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. But all those worketh that one and self-same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he wills. Not as you will, but as he wills. Amen. But you know what? Those nine gifts need a vessel to operate through. Amen. And when God sees you willing, he may use you in any one of those gifts. Can someone say amen? Amen. In 1 Corinthians 13, chapter 4, Paul says that if you use if you use in all the gifts but do not have charity, it profits nothing. Love must be in our lives. We must be of those who forgive, not only those that are in the church, but those, amen, outside the church. We also, according to Matthew 22, verses 37 and 39, uh, amen, we are to love our enemies uh, as ourselves, amen. Uh -huh. Amen. We love them. Uh, we help them. Uh, we are to let you to know, amen, that God uh, is there and God wants to help them uh, even though they don't want the help from Him. Love your enemy. By loving them, by forgiving them, you're heaping coals of fire upon them. Somebody say, hallelujah, glory to God, I want to burn them up. <laughs> well, understand the scripture first. The scripture was this, that coals were very precious and 
when you had a neighbor, amen, that ran out of fire and couldn't get his fire started, you would take some coals uh, from your place and take it over, Brother Charles, to his place uh, and dump it uh, so he could start a fire in his own place, amen. You were heaping coals uh, of fire upon his head, uh, amen. It was a love gesture, uh, and we need to do more of that. Some of you can't even forgive, uh, amen, the one sitting next to you. Hallelujah. you got to forgive because the Bible says uh, if you don't forgive, God is not going to forgive you. Amen. That's right. Well, we heard about the gifts. How about the fruit? Galatians chapter 6, 22 through 25. There's nine gifts. There's nine fruits. Amen. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long, suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. The Bible says walk in the Spirit and you shall not fulfill the lusts and desires of the flesh. Can someone Amen. praise the Lord? Amen. Glory to God. We're living in a time and an age when we need to realize that God has built up an army even in this last hour. There's been a separation, I believe. A separation from the goats and sheep. Yep. Amen. Those goats are the ones always butting. You know, I would butt, I could butt, I should butt. Uh, sometimes we need to get our butt out of the way. Right. Just do what God calls us to do. Amen? Amen? Just do what God calls us to do. We are living in a day and an hour when God is with us according to the Word of God. Uh, in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 7 uh, through and 8, it says, uh, uh, But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Uh, wherefore he saith, uh, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Uh, the 11th verse said, And he gave some apostles, and he gave some prophets, uh, and he gave some evangelists, and he gave some pastors uh, and teachers for the perfecting uh, of the saints, for the work uh, of the ministry, for the edifying or the building up uh, of the body of Christ to we all come together in the unity of the faith. We're never going to come together in the unity, amen, of being Baptist, Pentecostal, uh, Lutheran, all these other things, but we have one thing uh, in common that we can come together in, and that's the faith we have in Jesus Christ, uh, the only begotten Son uh, of the living God, amen. Thank you, Lord. Come to faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure and the stature of the fullness of Christ. 1 Timothy 4, 14 says, Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy with the laying on of hands of the presbytery. 2 Timothy 1, 6 and 7 says, Wherefore I put thee in remembrance, that you stir up the gift of God. Sometimes you've got to stir it up, folks. Uh -huh. Amen. You've got to get moved in the Spirit. You've got to move in the Spirit. Amen. Stir it up. Stir up the gift of God, which is in thee by the putting on of hands. That's why we lay hands on people in this church. That's why the devil tried to shut down the church. Right. Yep. He doesn't want you to assemble yourselves together. He knows that the end is near, and he has but a short time. He wants you watching by some Facebook app or by some social media uh, way, a status, amen. Uh, he wants you to think uh, those people are your friends. You ain't got but one friend that's really going to stay close to you. The rest of them, amen, may leave you. May forsake you. How do you know? Because the Bible says you'll turn in the end. You'll turn one on another. Amen. There'll be division. Jesus didn't say, I come to bring you unity, but I come to tell you that there's going to be division. Yeah. There's going to be some of those in your own household that's going to hate you. There's going to be those that you thought were your friends going to despise you, going to mistreat you, 
But hang on to Jesus because He's never going to leave you. Amen. He's always going to be there for you. Can someone say amen? amen. First Timothy 1 Timothy 1.7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a love and a faith and a sound mind. Peace of mind is better than all of your worldly goods. And the Bible says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of its righteousness, and all these other things shall be added unto you, according to Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. We have been enlisted in an army of God. Jesus is the captain of our salvation. We must come out of darkness and out of the world. We must begin to allow ourselves to be used by the Lord to win others to Christ. Matthew 16, verse 15 through 20, you know it. Amen. He tells us to go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, and he that believeth not shall be damned, and these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. Can someone say amen? They'll speak with new tongues. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They'll take up serpents. Amen. Lay hands on the sick and the sick will recover. And the Bible says that the Lord worked with them and He confirmed His word with signs following. Can someone say amen? Stop following signs and let signs begin to follow you. You are called by God. He didn't say it was just going to be the preacher or the evangelist. He said you go ye into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Amen. 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 That's our commission. That's what we are to do. Amen. Would you stand to your feet this morning?